Based on the idea that whiskey changes from your first dram to the last dram, this is Recycled Reviews. Welcome to another Recycled Review, I'm Roy Aquaviti. And these are based on the idea that your first couple of drams that you have out the bottle and the relationship that you have with the bottle and the last couple of drams are all quite different. And you change your opinion over time. And based on that idea, I stand here with my empties and before they go in the recycling, I give them a bit of a summary and a score and tell you whether I would replace them or not or perhaps recommend them to a friend or you guys. But remember, don't just take my word for it. In the description box below, you'll find links to other whiskey reviews out there on YouTube and beyond so that you can have more than just one man's opinion. And of course, also in that description box, you'll also find a link to a spreadsheet that lists all the scores I've ever given to these whiskies that I've reviewed in this format. Let's get started. Hakushu. This is the Distillers Reserve Hakushu, which is their non-age statement single malt. Japanese single malt and one of the affordable Japanese single malt, about 50 or 60 pounds. But it's still a wee bit pricey for a non-age statement and I have to say my opinion of this whisky is that it's still a bit young, honestly. I got this about two years ago, perhaps it's become a wee bit older now, perhaps they're making it with more mature stock. But this one was very green, it could be a bit tart and sharp and a bit spirity. It was a bit herbal as well at times and maybe after a couple of drams it was okay and you started to enjoy some of the complexities that do exist in there. But honestly, as soon as you sipped it alongside anything else, its youth was made quite obvious. And while this wasn't a bad whiskey, it's not a Japanese whiskey that I would be recommending to most folk. I'd give this one 7 out of 10. Taninic. This is quite tricky to pronounce. Most folks struggle with this. I'm of the understanding that you exaggerate the middle syllable, so it's Taninic. It's also quite difficult to get a hold of. This is made at a pretty big distillery up in the Highlands, just north of Inverness. One of the Agio's bigger distilleries, actually. But virtually all the stock from Taninic goes into blends, so we really don't see much single malt. And that's a shame, because I loved this 10-year-old. I really loved it. And just to be sure, I shared it with friends who were around last night and four of us sat and enjoyed the last few drams out of this bottle and we declared it absolutely lovely. It was quite sweet and delicate, there's nice fruit in there, there's nice kind of sweet honeycomb caramel notes, really quite a delicious whiskey. And for £50 for a 10 year old it's a little bit pricey, especially that it's only 43%, one of the grapes that I have with Flora and Fauna as much as I love them, but I would still say it's worth it. This is a good whiskey. I would give this eight and a half out of 10. Another Flora and Fauna, but this is a different thing altogether. This is Rosebank, 12 years old. This was actually a bottle gifted to me from Ralphie. And when we did our collaboration together back in March, this is the bottle that he brought along and left behind as a gift. Very, very generous, especially considering that Rosebank now is a closed distillery, it's currently closed. And a bottle of this Flora and Fauna Rosebank, 12 years old, is between three and 400 pounds at auction. So it's become really quite expensive to get a hold of. But the exciting news is that Ian McLeod now on Rosebank and they're reviving it. I just hope that they're able to bring back that same really classy, elegant lowland style with a really nice texture that Rosebank was famous for. Some of that is on display here, but not everything. Um, there can be quite considerable differences from bottling to bottling of this Rosebank, but most of them are, are damn, damn good. This is an eight to eight and a half out of 10 whiskey. And if you can get a hold of an older Rosebank, it's worthwhile maybe considering even squirreling it away so that you can open it as a bit of a celebration in the future and compare it to the stocks that's gonna come from Ian McLeod eventually. Damn fine whiskey. Thank you, Ralph. Ooh, we've got left in this as well. This is Green Spot. Single pot style Irish whiskey. But this isn't the standard Green Spot, which I love. It's 40% the standard Green Spot. Um, but these wine finishes that they do, this is the Chateau of Ilbarton. 
and they also do a Chateau Montalena as well. It's a completely different whiskey. It's put out there at 46% as well, which adds really quite a lot to the tram, it really does. And the wine finish, it doesn't sit tannic and acrid, it's really quite nice and fruity and adds a lot to the green spot base. It's really fantastic stuff and I recommend both of them. This one, the Chateau Leo Valbarton, this is the second bottle of this that I've had and I've really loved my time with this one again. And I love buying this by the dram for people when we're out together and things and surprising them by just how engaging a single pot still Irish can be, it's pretty fantastic stuff. I'll definitely go out and buy another green spot, I'll maybe try the Chateau Montalena next time and keep that in the house for a little while, but this is cracking and I would give this, honestly I would give this 9 out of 10, that's how much I like this whiskey. Great stuff. This is an Arran. This is one of their wine finishes. This is finished in Amarone casks, which is an Italian wine, quite a powerful Italian wine, actually. This is served at 50%, so it can be quite hot at first approach. And honestly, this is one of the older bottles as well, so I always felt that this was a wee bit youthful, this whiskey. It was quite spirity. And the wine, for me, the wine finish always kind of sat on top. I didn't really love this. As much as I love Arran and I love most of the things that's coming out of there just now, this is not a bottle I connected with. I've had this in the collection open for four or five years and struggled to get through it. The last couple of drams I had out of it was better, but by that time it's got really quite soft and oxidised a lot. I would say that yes, I will go out and I'll continue to experiment with Aaron and their wine finishes, but the Amarone is a try before you buy for me. 7 out of 10. Now this. This is a contender for my whiskey of the year, honestly. And that's a shame because I can't get hold of the stuff. I bought this, this is the winter release I bought back um, probably at the start of the year, I think it came out in February time. And I was able to get a hold of this and paid retail price for it, which was £95 I think. Which is a lot of money for a 12 year old whiskey. But this is Daft Mill. And this, if, if Rosebank can be this style, this is the kind of Lowland style that I really want to engage with. I love this stuff. It was just very elegant and clean. And I know a lot of people haven't been blown away by it, but it's just the style of whiskey that I love. And there was a nice, gentle, soft spice to this, almost a ginger note as well. Really cracking stuff. Unfortunately, the craziness that's happening right now with everybody trying to track down the Daft Mill releases, it's not something I want to get involved in. I'm gonna back off and wait until I can reconnect with Daft Mill again, until I don't have to fight my way through speculators and flippers and things, honestly but it's cracking whiskey and if you do get a chance to try this, please take your time and savour it. Nine out of 10. Now over to Spain. This is Dyk, D-Y-C. I think you pronounce it Distillerias y Crianthas. This is a 10 year old single malt from these guys. Now, it's not gonna blow anybody away, it's not the most complex thing, um, but it is a nice, nice whiskey. I would say that not many people on the planet are going to be able to distinguish this from a soft Speyside style of whiskey. This is served at 40% ABV and you know, it's just something nice to start the night going. The thing that is really compelling about this whiskey though, is this was 13 euros, about 11 pounds, about, I don't know, 13, 14 dollars or something like that for a 10 year old whiskey. That's got to give a lot of Scotch whiskey producers a fright, I would say. This is my second bottle of this stuff, and I've also got a bottle in Spain as well, because it's quite easy to get over there, much harder to get here. But I would recommend this to anyone, especially if you're looking for something inexpensive, inoffensive, easy drinking. You don't have any hassle about thinking about pouring over some ice. For that kind of money, you just can't ignore this. I'd score it only 7 to 7.5 out of 10 in terms of its whiskey, but it deserves at least a half a point more than that for its value. Not bad. This was a peach. This is Glendronic 15 year old. Now this is the revived revival. So this was released in 2018 after it was um, it disappeared from the shelves for two or three years. The previous one was legendary. Everybody loved it and it was fantastic value, about 40 to 45 pounds for a 15 year old sherry bomb. Cracking, cracking stuff. This is slightly modified. It's taken from obviously different stock and they've added a bit of PX into the mix here as well. However, 
This is a 15 year old Scottish single malt whiskey, still a sherry bomb. If anything, it's got a new, new side to it with that PX element as well, that nice sweetness, and it's not sickly with it either. It's just still very, very rich and very, very drinkable. And it's about 60 to 65 pounds thereabouts. There's 15 year olds, remember. This is cracking for that price. And I recommend that everybody tracks this down and has it as an example of a sherry bomb in their cabinet. That's still a great price for the quality of whiskey. This is nine out of 10. Another 15 year old, completely different thing. This is almost at the other end of the spectrum. This is Deanston's 15 year old. Still very, very good, served at 46.3% as well, which I always applaud these guys for. This is their organic product. Now that's fantastic that they've got organic barley there and they've had to mature it in organic casks. That's, that's all wonderful, but for me, that's incidental. This is a very, very pure and clean way to enjoy Deanston. It, it reminds me a lot of um, a single malt that's been left for a significant amount of time in a very tired or let's say a very quiet cask. So, you know, there's, there's still a lot of the Deanston character in there. In fact, this is probably one of the best drums to actually taste beyond the cask and taste Deanston as well, despite it being in the cask for 15 years. I really like this. I would be careful about who I recommend this to because there's not obvious hooks or richness to this. It's just very clean and pure and waxy and enjoyable. I would give Deanston 50 year old organic 8.5 out of 10 and I would recommend it to lots of folk and I would like to have it back in the cabinet again. Oh wow, there's still some in this. Wow. I guess that's the problem with opaque bottles, right? You just can't tell. Wow, that's been in there for quite a while. Save that for a bit later. This is a classic laddie. This is Brook Laddie's uh, non-estatement classic laddie, Scottish barley version served in a bottled at 50%. It's actually decent stuff. There was a time when this was a bit dodgy, but I think it's getting better and better, and the stuff that's coming out of Brook Laddie recently has started to become pretty good. I would say that yes, uh, I would replace this again. I would recommend it to people. Um, but for me, there's so much coming out of Brook Laddie generally that I would probably try to buy something else to have uh, representing that distillery in the cabinet this time. This wasn't bad and it's not too expensive either. Still, I would give it a seven and a half to eight out of 10 and suggest that you pick it up and try it yourself. It's fairly decent stuff. <laughs> didn't get on with this so much though. Probably going to take a lot of heat for this because I know there's a lot of people that love this Basil Hayden stuff. I felt as bourbon went, this was probably very just generic bourbon, just generic bourbon whiskey. There wasn't anything that really stood out to me. It's a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, but for me, it was bottled just far too soft at 40% as well. So I kind of feel that any kind of depth or engagement that was there once has been taken away to make it just a bit more mass market palatable. I have to say that I wouldn't really want this in the cabinet again, um, but I'm sure there are other things from them that are enjoyable. Not this one though. Six and a half out of ten. <laughs> Benromac, ten year old. This is a cracking whiskey. Now unfortunately this one's at 43%, so yeah, a bit mass market and ABV again, bringing the ABV down to make a bit less of an enjoyment barrier, I guess but it's good whiskey. The way that Gordon McPhail are approaching Bin Romac is to bring a lot of kind of traditional old school style back again. And you can taste that in this whiskey. It's one of the best 10 year olds that you can get your hands on right now. And it's not very expensive. I would give this a seven and a half to eight out of 10. Depending on the lineup, it can even perform a wee bit better than that. But I would also ask you to consider spending a few pounds more. This is about 35 pounds. But if you went to 50 pounds, you would be able to pick up their 57% ABV 10 year old as well. That is a cracker. Still, decent stuff. Well done GM and well done Ben Romac. Port Charlotte. This is the 2007 CC01. I believe the CC is supposed to stand for cognac casks. And I believe that the way they describe this is they talk about it being matured in French oak barrels that previously held fine French eau de vie um, from the cognac region. So is that cognac or not? I don't know. But the concept here is cognac cask. 
When I bought this, I bought it based on an airport duty-free sample that I tried and really enjoyed. And when I got the bottle home and sipped it, I didn't get on with it. However, my relationship did change with this bottle as it went down and I started to enjoy it more and more. Now sometimes it would taste just a wee bit on the tannic side for me. The wine influence is definitely there, the French oak thing is definitely there, but it was a good whiskey. And it added a nice, thick richness to the Port Charlotte Heavily Peter Brooklady style. I did enjoy this. There's an MRC version of this out just now, which is, I think is Mouton. Mouton Rothschild, Mouton Rothschild, Mouton Rothschild. I bet I'm pronouncing that wrong. But I've also enjoyed my time trying that one as well. Fairly decent stuff, seven and a half to eight out of 10. Would I have it back in the cabinet again though? Probably not. Here's another 15 year old. Unfortunately, Glengoyne have for some reason, probably a stock issue, have decided to discontinue this, which is a shame because it was one of their better products. In fact, arguably with a 15 year, 18 year old, just that, that price engagement balance there is pretty much perfect on both those bottling. This was a cracker, and I would say that it's one that you need to seek out before it all dries up. You don't need to panic, there's enough of it out there. But there's more bourbon influence in this, more ex-bourbon cask, and that brought a nice vanilla, rich creaminess to this whiskey, which is different from typical Glengoynes, which of course are more renowned for being sherry cask matured. And all that's fantastic, but it just offers you a different side of Glengoyne, and one that's really quite enjoyable as well. There is first fill sherry and refill sherry in this as well, but there's much more ex-bourbon cask and that gives you a slightly different profile. I will try and seek another bottle of this out there before it completely disappears, but like I say, if, it, if the price shoots up or if it, everybody goes into panic to try and get a hold of it, I'm not gonna stress too much about it because I think that it's maybe a stock issue in the future, I would hope that Glengoyne's gonna bring this back again. Great stuff, I would give this an eight and a half out of 10 and encourage everybody to try and get their hands on a bottle but don't pay too much for it. Finally, something a wee bit different. This is a Deanston. Now I know you're probably a wee bit tired of me banging on about Deanston and I do come across like I'm a bit of a fanboy sometimes, but it's just one of those things that if you're doing something well, it might not last forever. So while they're bringing it, let's applaud them for it as I always say. This is a different animal. This is a 12 year old Palo Cortado finish at cask strength, 55.4%. This is another one of the best whiskies I've had this year. Really, I went through this far too quickly. I shared some with the Scotch Test Dummies when they were over as well, and Scott was blown away. He wanted to get his hands on a bottle, and I picked one up for him before it disappeared. And that's the problem with this. It's a distillery-only exclusive bottling, and it's probably going to be tough to get a hold of just now. But as a concept, it's interesting. Palo Cortado is quite an enigma in terms of sherry. I think it's one of these sherries that kind of, um, it takes care of itself. I think it's when the floor dies off or something. Nobody designs Palo Palo Cortado, it's almost like it's, it's, um, it's really making itself. Palo in Spanish is stick and cortado means cut or short and that's how they mark the barrels with the chalk mark, a chalk mark to mark the barrel and when the Palo Cortado things come along they mark it sideways, it's cut stick, so I hear. This was a cracking whiskey and the Palo Cortado cask brought to this a funk and a richness that I've never tasted in a Deanston before to the point that I think that you could mistake this for Springbank, seriously. This was a really rich, really different, really enjoyable style of whiskey. And I don't think I'm gonna be able to pick up a replacement bottle, but if I can find it, I would buy it again. Excellent stuff, nine out of 10. And finally, just as a wee bonus, I've got a wee 16th extra bottle here as well, because I really enjoyed this stuff. This is a Westland uh, American single malt. I think Westland are up in the Northwest in Seattle. But this is their American oak. I tried their sherry cask and they're peated and uh, uh, they were okay. But this one was very, very good. I would give this eight and a half out of 10 and say that if Westland can keep bringing things like this, and I think I would start to engage with it fully. 46% ABV as well as presentation, and not that expensive as I understand it. This is a decent whiskey, eight and a half out of 10. So that's it for another recycled review. I need to get out of this rain before it starts to come down much heavier. I hope the audio hasn't been ruined too much by this wind. If you've enjoyed this, have a look over the previous recycled reviews and leave a comment down below. Remember to try and subscribe if you can and hit the bell icon to be notified when future recycled reviews come out. 
Remember the spreadsheet in the description box below with all the scores from the previous reviews. Also remember all the links to the other YouTube reviews and other reviewers out there as well that you can find below so that you're not just taking my word for it. Thanks for joining me in another Recycle Review. Until the next one, slant your button. until the end. Like a couple of previous reviews, I've kept some heels. I've got half a dozen heels from these bottles. So before they were emptied, I poured off a few samples. In order to be in with a chance to win these, all you have to do is write in the comments, heels please, and I'll search for that. And then I'll draw it randomly on one of the upcoming VPUB live streams. There'll also be a set put aside for patrons as well. You have to be in a country that I can legally ship this to you. You have to be of legal drinking age and you have to be subscribed to the channel. Good luck everyone and thanks for watching. And my neighbours see me standing, talking to a camera down at my recycling bin with empty whiskey bottles and wonder what the actual...